All right, now we need to introduce this concept of polynomial deflation. So if we're finding the roots of some polynomial, and uh, we can just make up any polynomial, and, and, and I'm going to represent it as a factored polynomial. So let's say it's x plus 1 uh, times x minus 2 times x plus 3 uh, times x minus 4 uh, times x plus 5 okay you get the idea so I have this polynomial and I'm finding the roots of it and, and so uh, f of x equals and of course this is set to equal zero uh, and we're finding the roots of this and uh, what happens uh, when we find the first root well what, what we can do is we can divide this by Let's, so let's say we find a root at x equals uh, negative 1. That's, that's this root at x equals negative 1. So we can actually just divide this by, uh, oh, yeah. We can just divide this by x plus 1, right? And then these roots cancel, okay? And so then we're left with this f of x equals x minus 2 at times x plus 3 times x minus 4 times x plus 5 and we can find the next root and when we find the next root then we can just do the same thing and say okay so let's say we find the root at x equals 2 so we say just divide this by x minus 2 and then these guys ca cancel out and we only work with that equation and we find the root of that and and we can keep going on like that so that's the concept of uh, of of polynomial deflation. Now this this uh, this um, approach of polynomial deflation uh, is similar. You'll recall this this whole uh, uh, div uh, division here uh, by a, by a factored polynomial. This is this is very similar to what you learned uh, maybe in high school. I don't know when you learned it uh, of synthetic division, right? Uh, smells of synthetic division. Right? And so, you know, when you do a synthetic division and you get no remainder, well, then you're in good shape and, and you you found one uh, of the roots. And, but if you get a remainder, then, then you're not quite there. 